With less than 100 days until November's presidential election, Americans need to take heed and take some time to dive into the Democratic deprivation plan for our country should Joe Biden steal the White House in November. Today, I will detail and list one critical matter that many in our country are not aware of and are not discussing. For a generation, liberals have attacked our nation's Second Amendment rights. And now, just three months before the 2020 election, Joe Biden is orchestrating a cabal of gun haters, hell-bent on disarming law-abiding citizens, leaving them defenseless against Democratic rule. Please sit back and arm your minds today as I lay out just what the liberal establishment has in store to disarm our democracy, should Joe Biden be successful in November. Welcome to the Closet Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Wright. Let's get started. For those of our listeners who follow our postings here on the Liberty Loft, you may have seen an article I posted this week illustrating Biden's gun reform policy. And in that article, I speak of how minorities and those Americans with low incomes will be rendered absolutely defenseless under the new Democratic firearm reform. I urge each of you that missed that article to make sure, pull it up, give it a good read. A lot, a lot of useful information there. But I want to outline some additional details here. Some information that no one seems to be discussing, but that will ultimately affect our nation's safety and security should Biden and his left-wing minions gain power in 2020. By now, we've all seen the writing on the wall here. And from coast to coast, liberals are doing everything in their power to disarm our country taking guns and ammunition away from law-abiding citizens and risking the safety and security of those who want to defend their life, that of their family, and their property. We have all seen the riots that have taken place across our nation's cities. We have seen how liberal prosecutors are behaving against individuals who are standing their ground to protect their lives. And in St. Louis, it took the Attorney General for the state of Missouri to step in and disarm the frivolous criminal charges brought on by liberal prosecutors in the city of St. Louis. They were charged, both of them. If you remember the case, both of them were charged with unlawful use of a weapon after they pointed guns at Black Lives Matter protesters in late June, and these rioters folks were on their property, already caused damage, and they are the ones who received the prosecution. And don't let the mainstream media fool you, folks. Joe Biden may be hiding out in the basement to avoid further embarrassment of verbal gaffes and an unintelligible nonsense. But he is hard at work with his newfound friend, Beto O'Rourke, and others to devise a plan to take guns and ammo out of the hands of legal owners. Now, Biden and Beto and their liberal lawmakers across the United States have singled out AR-15s, AK-47s, and all high-capacity rifles. They have also targeted and grouped all pistols and all firearms that can receive more than 10 rounds of ammunition, classifying them all as assault weapons. Let me rephrase that. Any pistol, any gun capable of of receiving more than 10 rounds of ammunition, Joe Biden and the liberal left are classifying these particular firearms as assault weapons. And now, we have seen what liberalism has done in states like Virginia. And now, Biden, if elected, will take these restricting gun measures to a whole new federal level. The former vice president is now touting that he single-handedly helped ensure the passing of the 1994 Clinton-era assault weapons ban. Joe Biden is taking credit for the 94 assault weapons ban, folks. And if he's elected, he and the other liberal establishment will return our country to an era where the only legal firearm that you're going to be able to carry or purchase is a Red Ryder BB gun. Something else I detailed in this week's article was Biden 
Beto, and, and the other members of the Bolshevik Brotherhood is what I call them, and their thoughts on moving most legally owned weapons to a ban list and require citizens in our country to participate in a federal buyback program or register each of their firearms and magazines under the National Firearms Act. And for those of you listening who may not know, the National Firearms Act was passed in 1934 and required certain firearms to register, and you had to register a specific gun, like a machine gun. But there was a $200 tax attached to each of those firearms, along with other fees. Now, the $200 price was intended to be prohibitively expensive, almost 400% more than what someone earned in a given month. Now, some of you out there might be saying, well, Eric, why is this so important? Well, folks, $200 in 1934 adjusted for inflation in 2020 today would equal almost $3,900. Now, I ask those listening today, how many of you out there have $3,900 to pay per firearm to keep them from being confiscated by the federal government? And how about those of you who've got dozens and dozens of 12, 15, 24, 30, 45, 50 round magazines? Would you be able to afford an extra $3,900 on each of those? In case you didn't know, the current penalties for anyone who violates the 1934 National Firearms Federal Law risk up to 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Do I have your attention yet? Folks, as a small business owner and a federal firearms license holder, since the arrival of COVID-19 and due to liberal government's inability and refusal to keep citizens safe from criminals, firearm and ammo sales have skyrocketed. Our nation has seen the highest number of gun purchases in history. Most are from new purchases from first-time gun buyers. And many in our nation do not believe that the government is providing protection which for anyone who has read the Constitution knows it's the first and most important job of government in the United States. Our nation's brave men and women in the military and law enforcement swear allegiance to protect our citizens from foreign and domestic enemies. And Biden and his communist cronies are planning to disarm our country and law-abiding citizens. We are not to look to our local, state, and federal governments to provide protection. No, 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 no. Our Constitution affords us these protections, folks. Defenses against people both in private and those within the government who wish to dismantle our God-given rights to life, liberty, and property without due process. The threat is real. As real as Al-Qaeda was on September the 10th of 2001. The citizens in our country face ultimate and grave danger. However, this time, the threat is from within, and the death count will boggle your mind. If the Democrats are successful, folks, the death count will absolutely be staggering. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge each of you to wake up. Pay attention to what is happening around you. Our nation is at risk. The very fiber of our founding is more fragile today than it was on July the 5th, 1776. Are we to sit back and allow our democracy to be dismantled? No, we need to unite, shy away from being afraid to speak out against what is wrong and what is dangerous. Joe Biden has, is, and will be absolutely devastating for our country. You need no further proof than liberal lawmakers and what they've been doing for the last five years across our nation. Get up, get mad, and get into action to say that we will not disarm. We will not allow those within our government to demand liberal conformity. I choose life over liberal lunacy. I choose freedom over fascism. And I will not lay back and hide behind the fear that Democrats and our nation want to instill among us. Folks, I ask you, to join me in this fight. This is Eric Wright, and this has been the Closet Conservative Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. 
Please remember to give a five-star review and share our podcast with your friends. The Closet Conservative Podcast is a production of the Liberty Loft. Copyright, the Liberty Loft, 2020. You can find more shows and information on our website, www.thelibertyloft.com, or any of our social media channels.